there currently again in my living room in South Burwick with Karen Reeds. I'm taping this on the same day that I taped some other books. That's why I'm wearing the same clothes. So I'll play it on a Friday, but it was done on the same day as some other books. Um, this book is very special. It's called Make Way for Ducklings by Robert McCloskey. He was one of the very first uh, writers and illustrators um, to do books for kids. When he was doing it, nobody else was doing that. And he wrote and illustrated some famous books that some of your grandparents or great-grandparents probably had read to them when they were kids, like A Time of Wonder. That's my very favorite children's book of all time. And I'll save it for last, for the last book I do in this series with you. And uh, Make Way for, excuse me, Make Way for Ducklings is today's book. Uh, Blueberries for Sal, One Morning in Maine. His books all take place in New England, um, most of them in Maine, so they're extra special to us. Today's book takes place in Boston. He won the Caldecott Prize for it, which was a really important prize for illustration. And um, you can tell that it was one of the first books written for kids because it's in black and white. And kids' books now are all in lovely, lush color. But his drawings were still so good that he won the prize. Let's see what else do I need to tell you. I think that's about it. This takes place in downtown Boston. Oh, and I need my reading glasses. Let me pause, let me run and get them. I'll be right back. Okay, thanks for waiting for me. All right. Mr. and Mrs. Mallard were looking for a place to live. But every time Mr. Mallard saw what looked like a nice place, Mrs. Mallard said it was no good. There were sure to be foxes in the woods or turtles in the water, and she was not going to raise a family where there might be foxes or turtles. So they flew on over some New England villages and woods and countryside. Today's book is a little longer than some. So settle in on your bottom bones and just get comfortable. When they got to Boston, they felt too tired to fly any further. There was a nice pond in the public garden with a little isle on it. The very place to spend the night quacked Mr. Mallard. So down they flapped. Maybe you've been to Boston and seen the public garden. Next morning, they fished for their breakfast in the mud at the bottom of the pond, but they didn't find much. Well, because it's not a very wild spot. Just as they were getting ready to start on their way, a strange, enormous bird came by. It was pushing a boat full of people, and there was a man sitting on its back. Good morning, quacked Mr. Mallard, being polite. The big bird was too proud to answer. But the people on the boat threw peanuts into the water, so the mallards followed them all around the pond and got another breakfast, better than the first. Now, maybe you know about the duck boats 
on the pond in Boston Common. They look a little different than this now. Um, but you know what the mallards didn't know, that this isn't a real duck. It's just a human boat in the shape of a duck taking people on a ride. I like this place, said Mrs. Mallard as they climbed out on the bank and waddled along. Why don't we build a nest and raise our ducklings right in this pond? There are no foxes and no turtles, and the people feed us peanuts. What could be better? Good, said Mr. Mallard, delighted that at last Mrs. Mallard had found a place that suited her. But... You can see the two ducks and you can see the two boys speeding towards them. Look out, squawked Mrs. Mallard, all of a dither. Don't get run over. And when she got her breath back, she added, this is no place for babies with all those horrid things rushing about. We'll have to look somewhere else. So they flew over Beacon Hill and round the State House, but there was no place there. They looked in Lewisburg Square, but there was no water to swim in park but no water. Then they flew over the Charles River. This is better, quacked Mr. Mallard. That island looks not, look like a nice quiet place. And it's only a little way from the public garden. Yes, said Mrs. Mallard, remembering the peanuts. That looks like just the right place to hatch, to hatch ducklings. So they chose a cozy spot among the bushes near the water and settled down to build their nest. And only just in time, for now they were beginning to molt. All their old wing feathers started to drop out and they would not be able to fly again until the new ones grew in. But of course, they could still swim. And one day they swam over to the park on the riverbank. And there they met a policeman called Michael. Michael fed them peanuts. And after that, the mallards called on Michael every day. After Mrs. Mallard had laid eight eggs in the nest, eggs in the nest, she couldn't go visit My Michael anymore because she had to sit on the eggs to keep them warm. She moved off the nest only to get a drink of water or to have her lunch or to count the eggs and make sure they were all there. You can see her counting.
one day the ducklings hatched out. First came Jack, then Cack, then Lack, then Mac, and Knack, and Whack, and Pack, and Quack. Mr. and Mrs. Mallard were bursting with pride. It was a great responsibility taking care of so many ducklings, and it kept them very busy. There's all the beautiful ducklings. One day, Mr. Mallard decided he'd take a trip to see what the rest of the river was like further on. So off he set. I'll meet you in a week in the public garden, he quacked over his shoulder. Take good care of the ducklings. Don't you worry, said Mrs. Mallard. I know all about bringing up children, and she did. Off goes Mr. Mallard. And you can see the ducklings have already grown up quite a bit. They grow fast. She taught them how to swim and dive. Swim with those big web duck feet. She taught them to walk in a line to come when they were called and to keep a safe distance from bikes and scooters and other things with wheels. You can see them all following her in line. When at last she felt perfectly satisfied with them, she said one morning, come along children, follow me. Before you could wink an eyelash, Jack, Cat, Lack, Mac, Knack, Whack, Pack, and Quack fell into line just as they had been taught. Mrs. Mallard led the way into the water and they swam behind her to the opposite bank. So they're going a long ways away from their island. All in a line. There they waded ashore and waddled along until they came to the highway. I wonder what they're doing. Mrs. Mallard stepped out to cross the road. Honk, honk, went the horns on the speeding cars. Quack, went Mrs. Mallard as she tumbled back again. Quack, 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 went Jack, Cack, Lack, Mac, Knack, Whack, Pack, and Quack, just as loud as the little quackers could quack. But the cars kept speeding by and honking and the Mrs. Mallard and the ducklings kept right on quack, quack, quacking. Lots of noise. They made such a noise that Michael came running, waving his arms and blowing his whistle. So quack, 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 and honk, 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 and tweet, tweet, tweet. Planted himself in the center of the road, raised one hand to stop the traffic, and then beckoned with the other, the way policemen do for Mrs. Mallard to cross over. 
And there she goes. As soon as Mrs. Mallard and the ducklings were safe on the other side and on their way down Mount Vernon Street, Michael rushed back to his policeman booth. You can hardly see Mrs. Um, Mallard and the ducks. They're way back there walking on the sidewalk and Michael is rushing to the police policeman booth. He called Clancy at the headquarters and said, there's a family of ducks walking down the street. Fam family of what, Clancy said? Ducks, yelled Michael. Send a police car, quick. Meanwhile, Mrs. Mallard had reached the corner bookshop and turned out to Charles Street with Jack, Cack, Lack, Mac, Knack, Whack, Pack, and Quack all marching in line behind her. And you can see the people in the store staring out at them on the sidewalk. Oh, and you can see how old this book is because of the old-fashioned cars can't you? Everyone stared. An old lady from Beacon Hill said, isn't it amazing? And the man who swept the street said, well now, ain't that nice? And when Mrs. Mallet heard them, she was so proud, she tipped her nose in the air and walked along with an extra swing in her waddle. When they came to the corner of Beacon Street, there was the police car with four policemen that Clancy had sent from headquarters. The policemen held back the traffic so Mrs. Mallard and the ducklings could march across the street. And you can see they've held back all of the traffic. You have to concentrate to see Mrs. Mallard and the ducks. Right on into the public garden. Inside the gate, they all turned around to say thank you to the policeman. The policeman smiled and waved a goodbye. When they reached the pond and swam across to the little island, there was Mr. Mallard waiting, for, Mallard waiting for them, just as he had promised. The ducklings liked the new island so much that they decided to live there. All day long they followed the swan boats. All day long they swallow, follow the swan boats and eat peanuts. There's the swan boat with, or the duck boat with the teeny tiny ducks behind it. 
and when night falls, they swim to their little island and go to sleep. Okay, Make Way for Ducklings by Robert McCloskey. All right, good to be with you again, and I'll see you next time. Bye-bye. Thank you.